to charm chats. Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Charm Chats with Kendra and Kat. Was that like an Eeyore? What was that? Yeah, I think so. <sighs> We're apparently Winnie the Pooh today. <laughs> oh man. All right. We are on episode 415. Merry Go Round. That's yes. Mary with an A. Correct. And not the name. Correct. This one aired on March 14th, 2002. So close to the Ides. So close. So close. So, so close. And yet so far. And yet. And yet. So, we start with an exterior shot of what looks to be a very, very old church before a quick shot of the program for Phoebe and Cole's wedding. Now, according to IMDb, this church has also been used in the movies Heathers and Walk Like a Man. No idea. As well as the TV shows Melrose Place... Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. And Desperate Housewives. I, I think I, I can recognize... I vaguely it remembered Buffy. it from Buffy. I don't yeah. remember which episode, but yeah, it, it tracks. Yeah. it But it's a really cool-looking Yeah, it's like a church. M- mini-cathedral, kind yeah. of. Because it looks huge and ornate, but it's not giant. Yeah. It doesn't take you five minutes to walk from one end to the other. It looks... It looks very nice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, inside, we see Piper arranging some flowers in vases while Phoebe is walking around, wearing a microphone that's making her voice echo a little bit. Well, yeah, because stone. Mm -hmm. And believe me, you and me, there are a lot of flowers right here. Yep. Piper is wearing a white t-shirt under a dark denim jacket that has, like, racing elements on it. Like, there's a, a... number 77 on the left shoulder and a checkered flag on the right shoulder and then there's a an additional patch on the back of it i like i don't know who in the prop department or in the wardrobe department was like i wonder if this is related to that one t-shirt of hers yeah well because she's worn a couple of different racing things yeah in the past few episodes like this season so i don't know uh, she's paired that with khaki pants and her hair is in a ponytail with a scrunchie holding it up. Um, it's super cute. I like it. Phoebe is in black pants with a white stripe down the side and a long sleeve orange shirt with ha- which has like a floppy turtleneck. Yeah, kind cowl of thing neck. happen, yeah. Um, and a knit cap in two shades of orange stripes and her hair is down. And is shoulder length. Mm-hmm. And she is absolutely freaking out about all of the wedding details. Mm-hmm. Piper is, you know, trying to go through the checklist, but also trying to calm her down at the same time. Yeah. And um, she mentions that everything, including the rice, has been taken care of. At this point, Phoebe looks over her and goes, no, we can't have rice. The birds, they'll explode. Yeah, they can't digest it. So Piper says that they will throw bird seed or release balloons, and Phoebe freaks out about the balloons hurting the whales. So, before we get too much further, birds can, in fact, eat rice. They can't eat instant rice, mm-hmm. because that will... The The point of instant rice is that it is partially cooked, and then you just basically are rehydrating yeah. it and warming it up. So... When it, once rice. it rehydrates, it really puffs up. Yeah. Instant rice is bad for birds. They won't explode unless they eat, like, so much of it that it fills their mm-hmm. stomach before but it's also, it expands. it's also not good for them nutritionally. True. It's a lot of empty calories. That is true. But they won't explode because of it. But, no, but, but it's a fun visual. Yeah. Instant rice is definitely not good for them. However, if you decide to wait, use... Wait, wait, wait. So instant rice is their Krabby Patty? What? Do you remember the one episode of Spongebob where Squidward starts eating Krabby Patties? No. And Spongebob is like, you can't eat this many Krabby Patties, Squidward. And Squidward, of course, sarcastic, says, what's going to happen? And I'm, Am I going to explode? And Spongebob goes, no, it'll go straight to your thighs. And then the camera pans out and down and you see his thighs are fucking ginormous, all four of them. Um... Uh-huh. And then you'll explode! And then he explodes. <laughs> okay, then. 
I do not believe that my niece ever watched that episode in my presence. Mm -hmm. So I cannot say that I've seen that one. Anyway, if you decide to use birdseed instead, be sure to wash it first. My my friend got married, her first wedding. They both worked at a pet store, mm -hmm. and so they decided they were going to get birdseed from the pet store to throw at the wedding because it was cheaper than whatever. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that birdseed that is meant for your household birds is coated mm -hmm. in a white substance that is like a, a nutritional something. It's like a powder that's added to the birdseed yeah, that, that gives them like extra. crack? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but when when your bridesmaids are in black dresses, oh, and our hair is s hairsprayed to God's country, when you throw bird seeds that has this coating on it, your black dress becomes speckled with white powder, and it gets stuck in your hair, and you're brushing it out of your hair for the next three days. Okay, so I'm hearing several solutions to this. Either wash your bird seed, uh, don't wear black or any dark colors for your bridesmaids. Um, and third one, it's the end of the wedding, who gives a fuck? Yeah, but we hadn't taken the pictures yet. Oh, okay. C yeah. Yeah, take pictures before. Because yeah. afterwards you just want to go to like the reception and have food. Yeah. And you have to make sure the bride actually fucking eats. Yes. Well, that wasn't an issue at this wedding, but mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. As for balloons, a balloon release is a ceremonial event in which a number of helium-filled balloons are released into the air. And I remember doing this in school as a child. I think there are pictures of me somewhere with... I, I vaguely remember having a huge Cracker Jack um, emblazoned purse. Oh. I don't, I remember seeing the pictures of it. I don't remember it because my, I do not remember most of my childhood. I have blocked out all of that insanity. Um, but I remember, I remember far too much. Yeah. But I remember we, we had, we wrote letters on note cards of like a little bit about ourselves and, and what we wanted to see for the future. And, you know, if found, please return to that sort of thing. Um, or like, you know, if, if found, please write a note back. Yeah, and send it to this address, whatever. And they all those little po those little pen pal of fate. Yeah, those little note cards got attached to the balloons, and then we released the balloons. And I remember, um, like seventy five percent, and there were like three thousand balloons. Like there was a ton of balloons that got released, and I remember like seventy five percent of them wound up in like the trees the next town over, <laughs> um, or like so some of them are found in in like lakes and ponds yeah. around town. It was very funny. Mm -hmm. So funny. So, yeah. That's why uh, most of balloon releases have been banned now, because... Yep. Because pollution. Yeah. And littering. Yep. Because um, what goes up must come down. Yep. So, I will link to a site that gives alternatives to such things that are much more environmentally friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I think if you get... I think if you get, like, bird seed from the hardware store, it won't have that coating on it. Possibly. The pet store will. But yeah, pet store, like, They sell tons of bird seed for, like, actual bird feeders mm -hmm. at the hardware store. And that's where, like, we used to get them for when we would do the whole thing where you get the pine cone, you coat in peanut butter, and then you roll it in the bird seed, and then you put it outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good shit. Good shit. Yep. Used to do that, too. Girl Scouts. Mm. It's one of the only fun things we did. I remember making, like, a birdhouse. I and didn't, doing I didn't the do Girl pine Scouts. Cones. I wish I didn't have to have done Girl Scouts. Or at least I wish my mother hadn't been one of the troop leaders. Yeah, my mother worked, so I could not go. I couldn't do Girl Scouts because she couldn't get me to any of the meetings. Because mm -hmm. she, you know, worked a full-time job. And so did my father and my father. That we're not going to go there. But my mother couldn't do it, and therefore it didn't get done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, Piper tells Phoebe to calm down and breathe, and then Paige walks in. She is wearing black tights and a black skirt with a black jacket that she quickly removes over a red shirt with ruffles. That's kind of off the shoulder. Yeah, it's like the sleeves and the collar are like all one ruffle connected. Yeah. 
Um, and you can see that she's got black bra strap showing. And her hair is down. She wears her hair down a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Phoebe freaks out that Paige doesn't have the dress because the bridal shop is closed tomorrow, which is also the day of the wedding. And why don't you have your dress already? Uh Uh-huh. Why? You should be getting that. Why? You know, like a couple of days before. Yeah. Like Like a week out. I understand that this, this isn't too much of a time shift from like whenever the last episode was. Yeah. But like legit. So clearly she was able to do with a sample size. Yeah. But she still had apparently had to have alterations, which is why it's, you know, at the bridal shop instead of whatever. But, like, seriously. Yeah. Pick up your own dress if you're worried about it. hmm Just saying. Yeah. Paige reassures her. She says that she'll pick up the dress on her way to the rehearsal dinner that night. Uh-huh. Piper gets Phoebe to sit down in one of the pews. Phoebe tells the universe by screaming at the ceiling... That she wants her perfect wedding day. Piper promises her that by this time tomorrow, she and Cole will be joined in holy matrimony. Yeah. And then we cut immediately down to that underground cave. Mm-hmm. Where the Cole. seer is like, holy matrimony will be the worst thing to happen. Yeah. Cole is in all black. The seer is in her red robes. Um, yeah. She says that it'll keep him from reigning as the source. And tries again to cancel the wedding. He's like, bitch, I can't. We've been through this. Yeah. Uh, I need to marry her. And then the seer is like, well, if you won't do it for the source, do it for your son. And he's like, wait, what? Yeah. She tells him that he's going to have a son who will be the most powerful child in the magical world has ever seen. But unless he does a dark wedding, mm-hmm. the kid is going to be on the side of good. Yep. He says, this is this is my favorite moment. He says he doesn't have enough time, but then he decides that he can just destroy the white wedding by starting a fight between Phoebe and Paige. Yeah. Like, Is okay. this the first, because we know the, the whole Halliwell line is all women. Like, mm-hmm. all women. Um, so is this the first reference we've had to a potential Halliwell being a boy? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That, that just popped out to me. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, um, he he has to get a demon to attack as a distraction and then set Paige up with some potions and bring about some infighting. Yeah. And he's like, hey, uh, just so I know, and also the audience, what what is needed <laughs> for a dark wedding? The seer tells him that he needs a dark priest at night in a cemetery and he needs to drink the bride's blood. And he's like, yeah, that'll be yeah. easy to do. Piece of piece of cake. That will not be at our reception, presumably. Yeah, super simple. And then we go to opening credits. Daryl is in the credits, so we know we're going to get to see him. We get an exterior night shot of the manor pushing in through the tree with no leaves. And then everybody is sitting around the dining room table, including Daryl and Victor. They are having the rehearsal dinner. Mm -hmm. Piper is in a black dress with cap sleeves that have like a slit down the center. She's wearing that little cross necklace. And her hair is in, like, a messy bun at the back of her head. Phoebe is in a low-cut blue dress, and her hair is in a bun at the back of her head that's, like, got a, like, an ornate hair tie thing Mm -hmm. holding it. And she's got a large silver necklace and these these earrings to match that are kind of in a fan shape. Yeah. Very pretty. Paige is in an asymmetrical gold shirt, so it's got one shoulder. It's kind of like a white gold. It's very light It's a very light gold, yeah. It's got one sleeve that goes down to just about her elbow. Um, A nice, like, wide kind of palazzo sleeve type deal. Yeah, it was quite nice. Uh, And then she has paired this with a black mini skirt and black tights, and once again, her hair is down. Well, is it all the way down, or is it, like, pulled back on the one side? I think it's pulled back on the one side. It might have been. Yeah. I know know that it was later. No, it was pulled... It was later she had two clips. No. Later this night, she has two teeny little pink clips. Yes. Later, yes. The next day... The next day she has the one side. So it might be actually fully down here. I forget. Yeah, I think it's fully down here. I I watched it less than three hours ago. That's fine. And I've already forgotten. It's fine. Anyway. Cole is in a dark gray suit. Daryl is in a light gray suit jacket over a black t-shirt, and he looks really good. Yeah. I think his hair's going out a little. A little bit. Like, Daryl is the kind of guy who, like, in just about anything, he can make it look good. You know? Yep. Leo is in a dark brown suit with a white shirt and an orange 
and yellow and white striped tie. And Victor is in a black suit jacket with a blue striped shirt. They're, of course, talking about the rehearsal that they just got through. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something about Phoebe power walking down the aisle. Yeah. Uh, And Cole says he has gifts for his groomsmen, which he picked Leo and Daryl for his groomsmen because he doesn't fucking know anyone else. Yeah. Um, Which was kind of funny. And he can't pick Victor. Yeah. Um, He picks up two gift bags and he hands them to to Daryl and Leo. And they turn out to be engraved Pro-V golf balls from Titleist, which is an American golf company that has been around since 1932. Mm -hmm. Daryl immediately recognizes them and is very impressed with this gift. And Leo's like, I don't golf. So Victor just yanks the box away from him. Yeah. He's like, I'll take them. Leo's like, they have my name on them. And Victor grabs them anyway and goes, so? (laughs) Which I just thought was great. Yeah. And then Phoebe then grabs a couple of baskets to give to her sisters. Mm -hmm. She she gives the, the baskets to her to her sisters because she chose them as her bridesmaids because they're her two best friends in the whole wide world. Also, they're her sisters. Yeah, I was like, I'm sorry. Do you have any other friends? Because I, I apparently mean, people she is inviting to this fucking wedding. Yeah. Um. Anyway, she hands them these gift baskets. They have a bonsai tree for balance and harmony, and a, a tiny little like dream catcher on a little leather necklace. Um, so that all of your dreams will come true and a deck of tarot cards, which super stoking up Paige. She, yes. She's like, oh yeah, my old deck is like totally wrecked. Yes. So a bonsai is the Asian art of using cultivating techniques to produce small trees that mimic the shape and scale of full size trees. It is very time consuming and requires a lot of time and patience. And I know if you have like a bonsai apple tree and you get it to fruit, it will make a full size apple. Interesting. Good to know. Or or like a lemon or whatever. Like, there's a ton of, like, dwarf trees you can make be that tiny, but, like, if they fruit, which is a big if. Rare, yeah. The fruit doesn't know to be tiny. Hey, you know. Except if it's, like, a mini lemon tree, but that's not a bonsai type thing. Right. Uh. Anyway, a dream catcher is a Native American thing. Typically, it's a hoop made of willow that has a woven net or web in the center that may also have sacred items like feathers or beads hanging off of it, and it's usually used as a protective charm for infants. It became publicly known in the mainstream back in the 1970s and have since been mass-produced and sold by New Age groups. I would even go so far as to use the term cultural appropriation because they're no longer viewed or used as they were intended. And if if you want to get one for, like, the aesthetic or whatever, get one from an actual Native group. Trust me, you can Google yeah. the groups that sell them yeah. and, you know, at least give it to the people who invented the damn thing. Yeah, don't buy a plastic one. Yeah, no, that shit. Yeah. I mean, you could also make your own because that's always fun. This and it's like true. a nice craft. This, this is very true. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tarot cards started out as just playing cards. I will, of course, link to the wiki for some of the games that could be played. Um, but it became associated with the occult way back in the 1700s. Most people will have the image of the Rider Waite tarot deck, which was originally published in 1910. It's one of the most popular decks in the English-speaking world. I'm going to link to that so that people can read more in-depth if they want to. Um, But that's where, like, when we think of an image of a tarot card, that's usually what we think of. Mm -hmm. And our mutual friend, Lee, Mm -hmm. has made their own tarot deck. And it's so cool. It's called the Sweeney Tarot. Yes. Uh, You know what? I will link to that as well. Yes, please do. Because everyone should buy one. And there's also a book that goes with it to explain, and Lee did all of the art themselves. Yeah. And there's... They're so pretty. If you're into Doctor Who, there's a little bit of Circular Gallifrey, like, in most of the cards. Yeah. Just, like, subtly up in there. Yeah. But it's it's great. It's super diverse. Uh, there's a lot of representation. Mm-hmm. And it's just so goddamn pretty. It's so pretty. Yes. I, I don't own one only because... I have one. It's up there. I, I know you do. I It's, like, legit. I don't own one only because I know that if I did, I would want to play with it all the time. And just looking at the cards and all the, And I'm like, I just... No, I'm just gonna not. I'm yeah. not going to own it right now. Mm-hmm. But, like, I kind of want to, to buy one and, like, frame the cards and put it up just as art. Because <laughs> it's just so pretty. That's a lot of cards to frame. I know. I'm aware. 
You know what you could do is you could get little, like, I'm sure they sell single card sleeves because Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, and then you could turn them into, like, ornaments. Maybe. That'd be cute. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. Again, so Paige is excited because her deck is trashed. Yep. And Phoebe's like, well, here, you can use, you can get busy with that while Cole and I are getting busy. Yeah. Then the phone rings and Phoebe runs off to answer it, hoping it's the photographer. And Daryl pulls out a wrapped cigar from his jacket, asking Leo if he wants to join him for a stogie. Now, a stogie is a type of cigar. Its technical name is actually a chiroot. Uh, it's a cylindrical cigar that has no filter and is clipped at both ends and does not taper. But what Daryl has is a normal cigar because it's only cut on one end. It's rounded on the other. Yep. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah. I used to smoke. And I used to know people who owned a, a store called the Tinderbox, and I was in there like all the time. So I, think, I, I think learned my, a lot about cigars. I think my dad's grandpa used to own a cigar company. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. I went with my dad to his like 50th high school reunion, and his friends from there, who had known him from like elementary school and whatnot, were talking about the fact that he used to bring cigar boxes as lunch boxes hmm. because they were like his dad's from his. Or, well, they're, I don't think they were his dads. No, I think they would have been his mom's because his mom's dad was the one who owned the company or whatever. Anyway, sure. But yeah, like, that was his lunchbox. It was a little cigar box. It was very cute. Interesting. Anyway, Leo, Leo says he doesn't smoke. <laughs> so Victor naturally takes Daryl up on it. Yep. And then Leo's like, oh, hey, there's chocolates in the other room. I'm going to go munch on those. Yeah. Piper follows behind him trying to stop him because those chocolates are for everyone. And Paige decides to see what the tarot says for Phoebe and Cole. So she has like the three piles. Yeah, she does that a she, she does a three a, a three card draw. So past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. um, the first card is the lovers card, which in the Rider Waite tarot represents relationships and choices. Mm -hmm. The important thing to know about tarot cards is that they're not literal. Correct. Usually correct. They can they have meanings and interpretations. And they're not always going to be, like, a one-to-one -one representation of your life. Correct. Unless you're watching this show. Well. So the second is the Despair card, which looked a lot like the Three of Swords. Yeah, there were the three swords Rider, sticking out of that chest. Yeah, in the Rider Waite, uh, which represents a lost relationship, accidental death, or deeply emotional sorrow. Um, because there is no Despair card in a normal deck. Yep. There just isn't. But no, it's just written right down at the bottom of there. Yep. The last card, like the lover's card, which does exist, the last card also exists in a normal deck of tarot. It is the death card, which most people automatically assume is a horrible thing. It's got to be the most horrible because, oh my God, death. But it doesn't signify actual death. It usually just means an ending of some kind. Yeah, or like a change. Yeah. Kind like, of deal. Yeah. So... Like, it's not nearly as big of a deal as this show is making it out to be. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she looks over at Phoebe, who's still on the phone, and then Cole kind of snarks about, oh, you don't really believe in that sort of thing. She just shakes her head but doesn't answer. And then Phoebe comes back to the table and apologizes, mentioning that she got upset with Paige for not getting the dress on time. She basically is like, I'm so sorry I'm being a bridezilla. Yeah. You know. Paige is like, yeah, well, the dress is now in the attic, so great. And then immediately, immediately. Cole excuses himself. Yeah, like not even a second later. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Piper and Leo come back to the table with plates of chocolate in hand, which I thought was very funny. Piper steals Cole's seat. Yep. And she asks what the cards said, because she saw Paige turn the cards, but Paige, you know, closed up the reading before anybody but Cole saw what it was. Yeah. Paige says that it was nothing. But she has a bit of tension in her face and in her body, but nobody calls her on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we cut to Cole, who walks in the kitchen, flames out, and appears in the attic. He walks over to Phoebe's wedding dress. It is, of course, a nice long white dress, A-line, very beaded top with extremely short, almost cap sleeves. Mm -hmm. um, Slight off the shoulder. Yeah, they they end up being off the shoulder, but on the hanger, it looks like they go straight up. Mm -hmm. um, and he waves his hand in front of it. And it just magically morphs into a larger size. Yep. A much larger size, but the same exact dress. Same dress, just bigger. Mm -hmm. And then he looks 
at the tag, which says, Hold for Phoebe Halliwell. And has the address of 17245 54th Avenue in San Francisco. And there is no such address in San Francisco as there is no 54th Avenue in San Francisco. Yep. Just saying. And then he, he not really snaps, but he like waves in front of it. And it changes the name to Millie Platt. Yes. And then he flames back out. Yep. Gives a little smile, flames out. And back in the dining room, Piper asks Paige to try the cards again as Cole walks in from the kitchen. And you can see Paige kind of mark immediately, that he's behind Yeah, her. immediately notices he's there and she's like, I'll do it later. Cole walks over to Phoebe and says that he should get going because he's staying in a hotel for the night. So he hugs Phoebe, says she has the number in case of emergency, and then Piper and Leo say goodbye and Phoebe and Cole head for the door. She asks what he's going to do on the last night as a single guy he grabs his coat and his suitcase and says that if he told her, she'd never marry him. Truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says she's feeling like she's standing at the edge of a cliff, but has never felt safer. She asks if he's okay. He says no and kisses her, commenting that she has no idea how difficult she's making it for him. She takes that to mean sexy times. Mm-hmm. Um, like he doesn't want to keep it in his pants. Mm-hmm. Um, and... So she tells him that he has to go. He'll have her soon enough. Yep. And then he says, I hope so, and leaves. And we kind of get a a lingering shot of her, like, staring at him as he goes. Mm -hmm. It was was slightly awkward, especially since those bangs. I just can't get past the bangs. They're fine. Oh, they're just so short. So short. They work for her. (sighs) We, no, we jump really o- don't. Oh, shut up. Uh, we jump to a mausoleum where the seer and a man we will find out as the Dark Priest. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're smashing into, oh, only our favorite crypt. Yep. With mm-hmm. a sledgehammer. Yep. The Dark Priest is played by a that guy named Tony Amendola. He was born in 1951 in New Haven, Connecticut. He has 128 acting credits so far, starting back in 1984. Now, he has been in a ton of stuff that people will recognize him from, including but not limited to Stargate SG-1, Dexter, Continuum, Once Upon a Time. What what did you recognize him from? I recognized him from The Mask of Zorro. Yeah. He was Don Luis. Yeah. Or Luis, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that one, so. But yeah. 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 He's in a bunch of stuff. Yes. Which need... was actually Antonio Banderas' first movie in English. Oh. He learned English while on this movie. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Anyway. He Dark... tells he tells the seer that he saw some witches poking around a few years back. Uh, actually, a few of three years back was what he said. Yeah, a few of three. Like, he only marks the years in groups of three or something. Yeah. Um... And he's like, I think they buried it in here, which is why they're smashing out that one coffin, or uh, sarcophagus, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, beer. Sure. That's B-I-E-R. Yes. Uh, and so he's happy to help. His job, apparently, has been very lonely. He hasn't received a human soul in his collection for late in months. Yeah. I, I do think it's funny. She goes, well, I will make a donation. And he's like, thank you so much. <laughs> he said, bless you, child. Yes, bless you, child. Yes, that's what it was. Bless you, child. Uh Uh-huh. So he takes the box out of the crypt, and he tells her that it is not wise to unearth a Lazarus demon, as they're mean and unreliable, which is a bad combination, and that burying the remains is the only way to prevent resurrection. Yeah. I I do Mm. think it's very funny, just a quick aside, um, that Lazarus, as a given name, is derived from a Hebrew word that means God has helped. Just just putting that out there. I think that's hilarious. Uh, anyway, she's like, yeah, I know. I'm he aware. asks why she wants one. She basically tells him to mind his business. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, that's my concern. Yeah. He tells her she that he's heard the rumors of the source. She's like, yeah, a new one's risen. And he's like, well, what's in it for you? You're digging up demons. Yeah. Like, you're normally in advisory capacity. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. So she tells him of her vision about the source's son and he's like, oh, so you're going to be the hand that rocks the cradle. Yeah. That is probably a reference to 
a movie of the same name from 1992 that is a psychological thriller about a vengeful woman out to destroy another woman and steal her family. It is. The, um, the full quote is, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Mm -hmm. It is the refrain from a poem by William Ross Wallace that was written in 1865. Yep. Yep. Uh, anyway, she says that she just has to get rid of the mother first. And then the dark priest opens the box, uh, throws the ashes out onto the, the floor. Really? And then they, they, we see this great reverse shot of the ashes collecting together as if by wind or whatever. And then it forms up into Coolio. Yep. It's that, just Coolio, guys. That it does. It's that Coolio. It does. Yep. Braids and all. With a nice, like, heavy trench coat yep. thing. Or yep. not, that's not a trench coat. What would that be called? Uh, like a duster? Was it... Like, yeah, a heavy, like, duster, like, vampire hunter type of, yeah, type of jacket. Yep. Uh, and yeah, it's Coolio. Yep. Coolio was born Artis Leon Ivy Jr. Mm -hmm. in 1963 in Pennsylvania. Though his IMDb says he was born in Compton. He he was not. He grew up in Compton, but he was born in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, so most people will probably know him from the song Gangsta's Paradise. Yep. Which was written for the 1995 movie Dangerous Minds. Mm -hmm. And then wonderfully parodied by Weird Al as Amish Paradise, which is the only reason I know about it. Yep. Um, and that happened a there year was later. a huge lawsuit that mm -hmm. Coolio brought. Um, that because, Al, of course, won yes. because parody is covered under copyright law. Correct. Um, but I guess Coolio just wasn't well, super happy about the... Well, here's the thing, is Weird Al is meticulous about getting artists yeah. to consent to his doing a parody. Mm -hmm. And Coolio says he was never asked. Okay. And from what I remember from this incident was that apparently Weird Al asked Coolio's management. They said yes, but never actually talked to Coolio about oh, it. Oh. So. That's rude. Yeah. So that's a whole thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And but, I believe I I saw the other day an orchestral parody rendition of Gangsta's Paradise. Interesting. That I will have to look up. It was on Tumblr. I'll have to find it again. Interesting. I'll have to put that in the Discord. Mm -hmm. um, but Coolio... Actually has 72 acting credits. That's a lot. Between 1993 and 2018. And only 16 of those are characters that were credited as Coolio. <laughs> so, you know, that's a thing. Uh, the Dark Priest tells the seer to tell the new source that he lives to serve. And we cut to a hotel room. Inside the hotel room, Cole is sitting at a table with what looks like a junior chemistry set. It has vials and a scale and a small little bowl that kind of looks like a mortar and pestle without the pestle. Yeah. Anyway, he's mixing together some powders. One of them is literally a vial of silver glitter. Uh-huh. That's it. Yeah, just silver glitter. Yeah. Yeah, who am I to judge? Mm. Yeah, silver the phone glitter. rings and he leans back to grab it off of the table, answers it. It's Phoebe. She's like, there's an emergency. And he's like, wait, what? I needed to hear your voice. And he kind of like rolls his eyes and smiles. Yeah. We cut back and forth between him in the hotel and her in her bedroom during this call. He says that he's glad she called and mentions that Paige seemed weird and cold at dinner. She's like, I didn't notice. And he says, oh, well, I don't want anything to come between you and your sisters or hurt the power of three in any way. And then the potion explodes with an audible sound that she apparently does not hear. Yeah. Like a little, like, puff. Uh-huh. And then she tells him that Paige has been nothing but supportive. So he says, oh, you know what? Forget it. Which I'm she probably kind of does. imagining it. She does kind of with like a confused look. Yeah. Like, why would you bring it up if you want me to forget it? But okay. And then he changes the subject to ask how she looks in her wedding gown. And he's putting the, the stuff from the bowl into a small little bag. She says she's been too busy to try it on. He tells her to think of him taking it off. And then there's a knock on the door. And... He gets off the phone very abruptly, pretty much just says, gotta go, love you, and hangs up before she can say anything. Yep. He waves his hand over the potion supplies. They disappear, and he goes over to the door, putting the pouch that he has filled in the inside left pocket of his jacket, and he opens the door. And there is Daryl, Victor, and Leo. 
Leo has removed his tie, but has brought poker chips and regular chips. He brought chips. Yeah. Because no wedding should be without a bachelor party. Now, a bachelor party, also known as stag party, stag night, stag do, or stag weekend in the UK and Ireland, or bucks night in Australia, it's normally a small party or gathering that is held shortly before a man enters into marriage. Now, they started back in the 1800s, hosted by the father of the groom, and were black tie affairs, including toasts to the bride and groom. Since the 1980s, however, bachelor parties in the U.S. have, more often than not, included strippers. (laughs) Because apparently the one thing you need right before you get married is to be forced to stare at another woman's naked body? Yep. A woman that you're never going to get because you're getting married. You're going to be stuck with one woman for the rest of your life. And also you're never going to get that woman because this is her job and you're not allowed to touch her. Yeah. There is that as well. Now, a friend of mine (laughs) decided that his bachelor party would be a weekend of paintball. Luckily, it took place about a month before his wedding. Otherwise, he would have had paintball bruises in all of his wedding photos because Mm -hmm. everybody was gunning for him. Yep. Because it was fucking funny. Like, you want to do paintball for your bachelor. Okay. (laughs) You'll regret that. Yeah. You know. And uh, where Leo has brought the chips, Victor has brought the metaphorical dip because he's brought several VHS tapes from his private collection. One of which looked like it said hot tub nurses. Yeah. Just putting that out there. Yep. Hot tub nurses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Daryl, as he's entering, like lifts up uh, the right side of Cole's jacket and peeks in, and he's like, you have the key to the minibar? And Cole kind of, like, starts at this, because he's like... Right, because he's, the, put, the, the he's put the thing in, the in his hand. left side. Yeah. yeah. So a minibar is that little refrigerator in a hotel room that's filled with, like, snacks and drinks, all of which can be consumed by the guest and charged to their bill. But be forewarned, as those items are obscenely overpriced. Like, I've seen a 79-cent can of Sprite be charged $6 on a hotel bill. Yep. It's insane. Yeah, and, and a lot some, of a lot of new mini bars have like some kind of weird mechanical way of telling. Yeah, or like not. an infrared thing. Yeah, or like weight sensors. Mm-hmm. And it literally, like, if you move something in a mini bar, it automatically charges you, whether or not you whether or not you consume said item. Yeah. Um. So, be, pay attention to that. We can thank Robert Arnold who was a manager at a Hong Kong Hilton hotel in 1974 for the introduction of the mini bar. Now, the good part is mini bars have become less popular with guests, probably due to the overpriced nature of said items inside. So a lot of hotels have been phasing them out in order to just have a fridge. Yeah. Just a plain old fridge. Where you can put your own stuff. And they'll maybe have some like water bottles on the counter that have a yeah. price tag on them. Yeah, they, and then of they course, will have that. The absolutely fucking mandatory coffee machine. Yes. Now, here is the thing that I learned. The coffee is usually free. Yeah. The water bottle, not so much. No, the water bottle's never been free. Yeah. But that's the biggest thing is like a lot of people will be like, oh, they gave, you know, water and coffee and whatever. The coffee is free. You right. can you can take all of the coffee, all of the creamer, all of that. That is free. That is complimentary with your room. All of the shampoo. Yep. All the of shampoos the soap. and the soaps. Yep. Those are also complimentary with the room. Not the towels. Don't feel bad about rope. taking those. Yeah. Don't take don't take the fabric items. No. Leave the towels. Leave the robe. Leave the bedding. Yeah. I know you somebody, don't want that bedding anyway. You it's really been don't. through too much. You really really don't. I know someone who who accidentally quote unquote packed. A pillow from her hotel. I'm like, how do you accidentally pack a pillow? How does that happen? She goes, I don't know. It wound up in my suitcase. And I'm like, were you traveling alone? She goes, no, I was with my husband. I was like, he put it in your suitcase. (laughs) Like, it didn't accidentally do anything. No. If you didn't put it there, he did. Yeah. Anyway, we cut to Paige's bedroom at the manor. She she... is laying on the bed. Yeah. She lays the tarot cards on the bed. Again, that three pile set up. Mm -hmm. Uh, She asks the question he asked before, which is, what does the future hold for Phoebe and Cole? And just like before, she gets the lovers, despair, and then death. And she 
grabs, grabs the, the cards, cards and runs into Piper's bedroom. Piper is brushing her hair. She has changed into a purple pajama set. So it's like a little purple tank, tank top. top and silk pajama bottoms. And she's got that underneath a thin, pale pink robe. And Paige holds up the cards to show Piper, saying that Phoebe and Cole's tarot reading says that they were lovers in the past. Despair fills their present, but death is their future. Um, yeah, because lifespan? Yep. I mean, Piper, Piper, of course, I doesn't take that tack. She grabs the death card and says, this looks nothing like him. Prue met him. I know. Yeah. Paige tells her that she's missing the point. She says that it's a bad omen. And Piper's like, uh, not necessarily, because Piper knows that death doesn't necessarily mean bad. But of course she doesn't say that. Yep. Paige says that while Cole might be a nice guy now, he was the world's greatest demon for, what, like a century? And so that kind of karma with the blood is going to be bad. Um, and Piper asks if she's considered the possibility that the cards were drawn due to Paige's feelings and not Phoebe's future. And Paige <laughs> immediately backs down. She's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that could yeah. be a possibility. And then they, they hear, hear Phoebe, Phoebe scream. scream. They take off running. We cut up to the attic where Phoebe is wearing her wedding dress, which is way too big for her. We see the white corset underneath. Piper and Paige walk in. Phoebe immediately tells Paige that she's ruined her wedding before reminding her that the bridal shop is closed the next day. Piper tells her not to blow things out of proportion, and Phoebe says that her wedding dress could double as a circus tent, which I took great offense to the first time I saw this, and again when I watched it for these notes. Mm -hmm. Just because it's big on you doesn't mean it's a fucking circus tent. Stop fat shaming. <sighs> also, it's completely the wrong colors for a circus tent, Phoebe. Come on. Um, mm. Paige is like, all I did was pick it up. And Phoebe's like, yeah, the wrong one. So Paige is like, well, no, no, che I, checked, I the checked the tag. So Phoebe does the, uh, Alyssa does this really great physical yes. comedy bit where she's like flipping, flipping the card between her fingers. And then she, she looks at it and she's like, Millie Platt. Do I look like a Millie Platt? And she like throws the tag at her and almost, it almost hits Rose. Yeah. Paige says, that's impossible. And Phoebe goes on to say that they'd have time to fix it if she had picked up the dress earlier when asked. Except she wouldn't have. Nope. But anyway, Paige is like, don't worry. I can sew. I will take in all of the seams. Mm -hmm. Overnight. And just then, the Lazarus demon smokes in and startles them. He waves an arm. Piper goes flying across the room. Phoebe drops the dress. It pulls around her feet. And you get to see that not only is she wearing a white corset, she's wearing, they almost look like pantaloons. Like tiny little short, like, short, short, pantaloons. short pantaloons. Yeah, yeah. they're little white it's very cute. They're adorable. But yeah, she kicks him and he crashes into a bookshelf. Which brings our Furniture Annihilation quotient up to 14 for the season and 63 for the series. And then Paige calls for a sword, which orbs off of a table and just stabs Coolio through the abdomen. Yep. And he turns into dust. Yes. And then the sword and his ashes are left behind on one of the shattered shells of the bookshelf. Yep. Phoebe tells Paige that she'd better do something about the mess. Paige says she'll check the Book of Shadows. And Phoebe's, and Phoebe's like, like, I'm, I'm not, not talking about the demon. I'm talking about the wedding dress. And she literally throws it in Paige's face. And it just kind of goes over her head. Yeah. And then she storms out of the attic and we go to commercial break. Mm -hmm. I just, it was one of those where it's like, I understand that you're upset. Mm -hmm. I do. However. Yeah. I, honestly, that dress looked like it could have fit me. Yeah. Yeah. Because Alyssa's tiny. Alyssa's very tiny. Yeah. Although I always I always get the impression that they're taller. Just like when I watch this, I'm like my in my brain, I always assume that they're taller. But like I've seen photos of how tall Holly is and how tall Alyssa is. I'm like, oh, this must have been because I was like a child when mm -hmm. watching this originally, even though I wouldn't have been much shorter. Yeah. But anyway, we come back from commercial break. We're in the attic. Piper is looking through the Book of Shadows. Paige is busy sewing Phoebe's dress, and Phoebe is pacing around. She is now in a blue fuzzy robe with butterflies on it. I don't know why, but I loved that robe. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Leo orbs in with Cole, who immediately asks if Phoebe is okay. 
She says he's not supposed to be there. He says that he was worried because Leo said it was an urgent call. And so she hugs him, says that she's fine, and that no demon is going to stop them from getting married. She says her sister is another story. And Paige replies that she said she was sorry. And Leo asks what kind of demon attacked. Piper has found the Lazarus demon in the Book of Shadows. And wouldn't you know it, there's a lovely drawing of Coolio. With all of his tiny braids. Yeah, because apparently they all look like Coolio. Yep. Anyway, Cole's like, are you sure that it was a Lazarus demon? Piper's like, yep. And, and quotes she, the book and she says they're they're rare, high-level demons with telekinetic powers. And then Cole's like, yeah, has it resurrected yet? And as if on command, a la convenience, it does, it does right then. Paige calls out a warning. Instead, instead of, of just calling the sword again. Yeah. And the demon uses his telekinetic powers and throws Piper and Leo across the room. Paige calls for a sofa, which orbs out and orbs back in where Piper lands. And Leo lands on the floor nearby and hits his head on the leg of the sofa. <laughs> so that was kind of funny that it caught Piper and not Leo. Yeah. The the demon uses his power as Cole like yells out, and he makes the chandelier above Phoebe drop on her head. Now, did we decide if we are adding the chandelier to the FAQ? You know what? I think I'd forgotten where the chandelier was. If it were like the chandelier downstairs, I would say yes, but this one is not a focal point, so I'm going to say no. All right, then. So this is not going to be added to the FAQ. Okay. Uh, Paige tells Piper to blow him up, but the demon smokes out before she can. Piper calls to Leo, who rushes over to Phoebe and heals her because she had like a gash on her head. She groans and Leo and Cole help her up. Cole asks if she's okay. Phoebe says she thinks she is. Piper says that he'll be back. And the, the book says that Lazarus demons get stronger the longer they're out of cemetery ground. Paige questions that. And Cole says that the only way to keep them from resurrecting is to bury them in a cemetery. Which makes our previous exposition become... Unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. And kind of clunky. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe realizes that this means someone intentionally dug him up to attack them on the night before her wedding. Leo asks who and why. Paige says that it was to stop the wedding, and then says that she did two tarot card readings that both say that Marion Cole would only cause death and despair. Phoebe, of course, is insulted and disbelieving, but Paige is like, yeah, Cole saw the first reading. Didn't he tell you? Yeah, surprised he didn't mention it. Cole says that they never would have made it this far if they ran every time something seemed dark, which Phoebe agrees is true, yeah. and asks if there's anything else bothering Paige. Paige is like, no, not really. And then Piper says that she and Paige will be on Demon Watch so that Phoebe can get some sleep. Phoebe says she's too wired to sleep. Paige says that she might be able to help with an aromatherapy treatment, and Cole seems to get some sort of idea from that which is just telegraphed on his face. No. And Piper says that everything will be fine as long as they stay calm. And then we get a time jump to the underground. Cole throws the laser demon through the table, which, which of course does not count for the FAQ because it's not in the manor. Correct. Coolio gets up. He's a bit pissed off. And he's like, I was just doing what the seer told me to do. So Cole's like, yeah, fucking kill my fiance. What? Yeah. The demon says that the old source would have rewarded him for killing one of the witches. But Cole says the old source was reckless, and now he's dead. Nice implication there, Cole. So mm -hmm. uh, Cole tells Coolio that he now works for him, and as long as he follows orders, he'll never see another cemetery. But if he hurts his bride again, he'll bury him himself. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. It was like, you hurt her again, I kill you myself, I bury you in the ground. Yeah. And the cemetery ground. Yep. And then you never wake up. Yep. He then throws a fireball at the demon, turning him into dust, and tells him to stay down till he's needed. Like a puppy. Yep. He then turns to the seer, asking how dare she unearth a Lazarus demon. She says that they needed a creature that would lure Phoebe into the cemetery, and that the witches must believe they're under attack for the plan to work. He reminds her that there's no plan with Phoebe dead. And she's like, yeah, can you handle being the fucking source? He asks if she's questioning his leadership, but she says that he has inherited the world's evil and she'd follow that anywhere. I will follow him. Thank you. Uh, she reminds him that Cole is still inside of him and Cole loves the witch. He says he can feel it and she says that Cole's love for her, for the witch, not for the seer, obviously, obviously. Uh, ruined more than one good plan when he was just a demon. 
He says, the, the source basically says that Cole's voice is now just a whisper in his head instead of the scream it used to be, and he can use those feelings to control Phoebe. Cut to Phoebe's bedroom via a shot of the framed picture of Cole and Phoebe that we saw in the last episode, and then we see Piper and Phoebe walk in. Phoebe is now in a silk pajama set. The sleeves are a little long, and the shirt itself is a little short, and the pants seem to be riding low. Her hair is down and a little bit frizzy. Piper is saying that she and Paige will take shifts with Piper going first and then Paige being there to wake her. And then Paige walks in holding a, a little jar of white cream. Yep. And she says, uh, she, Paige calls it heaven in a jar. It's a special blend she made herself. Patchouli oil for balance and confidence. Chamomile to relax the nervous system. Put it on her face. Yeah. She'll be out like a light. Exactly. Now, patchouli is from the... Uh, Lemissier. Okay. Uh, Lemissier. Lemissier? Lemissier. Something like that. Sure. Keep all those. From that family, uh, along with mint, the chamomile flower looks like a tiny version of the common daisy because they're both from the... Asteraceae. Family. So there you go. Yep. I'm very proud that you could even have a clue. I could not even begin... There's so many to read those. fucking vowels. Yeah. There's a combination of E's and A's that my brain was just like, nope, Kendra will do it. You know what? I kind of want to look at it, look and see if the dictionary can do me a thing here. Okay. Because they'll have a pronunciation guide. Sure. So let's see this first one. Lamia. C-A. Ha ha. What? Oh. Audio pronunciation. What? It won't. Do it. Well. And I need an app. Well. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. Fuck that noise. Let's go to Wikipedia, bitch. Let me ask you. Uh. Le. Me. S-C-A. Yeah, I was right. Let me ask you. Alrighty then. Cool. Oh, it includes basil, mint, rosemary, sage, savory, marjoram, oregano, hyssop, thyme, lavender, and perilla. And I think the dead nettle as well. Yes, mint, mint and dead nettle. Yep. yep. They are Which aromatic. I just, I just love the name dead nettle. It just sounds so metal. Yep. So nettle. That too. Mm. Apparently includes chia as well. Makes sense. So your chia pet is a lamia. Sure. Cool. Anyway, Paige apologizes for the dress, saying that she wants everything to go great, and they hug. And then Paige leaves. Piper's like, she's trying. And Phoebe smells the cream and says, it can't hurt. Piper asks if she's feeling tense. Phoebe says that she's just extremely alert. Yeah. And Piper tells her that even though she wants the Cinderella fantasy, she needs to not be upset if everything doesn't go exactly as planned. Phoebe's like, what are you getting at? So Piper reminds her of her own wedding day, where she wanted everything to be perfect. This makes Phoebe remember that Prue came crashing through the front door on a motorcycle, and Piper jokes that only Prue could make her wedding all about her. Technically, the dude came crashing through the front door. Prue went crashing back out Correct. after she passed out. Yep, yep, yep. But hey, splitting hairs. Yep. She then says that the ceremony was a total blur and that in the end, quote, all that matters is that you marry the guy that you love. And if you manage to do that, your wedding was perfect. Unquote. Which is a good, frankly, a it good is. It uh, is. philosophy to take. It is a very, very good philosophy. Mm -hmm. And more people should remember it. Yeah. That your wedding in the long run doesn't matter because it's the marriage that matters. Yes. Phoebe kisses her on the cheek, gives her a hug. We then have a lovely time lapse that starts on an exterior shot of the manor. And then we see Cole flame in to Phoebe's bedroom. He sits next to Phoebe as she sleeps and she has used the face cream. And it looks like her face has been smeared with sour cream. <laughs> or like extremely thick ponds. Yeah. Um, ponds cold cream. Yeah. Very good for taking off makeup if anyone needs it. There you um, go. He pulls the the teeny little pouch out of his jacket pocket and then waves his hand over her face and chants something, like kind of sprinkles and then waves. Yeah, and um, chants something in faux Latin. Yeah. We cut over to the hallway as Paige walks out of the bathroom. She is now wearing a red tank top that shows off her belly button and white silky pajama pants that have lip prints all over them like polka dots. 
And and she's kind of rolled down the 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 waistband of yep. those a bit. Her hair is down, but pulled back slightly by a clip on either side of her head that teeny had little, little teeny little pink butterfly clips. Yep. Little little, little cute little clips. Mm-hmm. She then sits, <laughs> she sits in the chair outside Phoebe's door, and then as she goes back to sewing the dress, she hears Cole chanting in the bedroom. She hears voices, but doesn't know what they are. Well, we can hear that it's Cole. We can hear that it's Cole, but, but she, she hears know. a chanting voice in yeah. the bedroom. Inside Phoebe's room, Cole finishes his chant, and Phoebe's face glows. And then Paige opens the door, and Cole quickly changes to look like Piper. Sans rope. Yeah. Uh, Paige asks what she's doing in the room, and Cole Piper uh, re- replies that she was checking on Phoebe because Paige was in the bathroom. And then they leave Phoebe's room and close the door behind them. Paige says that she didn't even hear her, and our, our Cole Piper says that that would be a problem because what if I were a demon? Ha, 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 ha. And she, then tells Paige that demon watch means no bathroom breaks. Yes. I don't know why, but I love that. Yeah. Demon watch means no bathroom breaks. I want that, like, cross-stitched on a pillow. <laughs> Regina? <laughs> anyway. Paige says she's got it. And as, as Cole Piper starts to walk away, she turns back and tells her, whatever you do, don't, don't fall, fall asleep. asleep. So Paige nods very seriously. Yep. And then goes back to working on the dress. And then Cole Piper does the, like... Hand wave thing. It's it's not exactly a wave. It's just kind of like a, a flourish. It's yeah. a flourish. Yeah. Like a finger twist flourish. And then Paige's face glows and she falls asleep instantly. Instantly. And then Cole Piper like walks into Piper's room where Piper is asleep in bed. No Leo in sight. Correct. Cole Piper waves her hand over Piper, whose face glows much in the way that Paige's face just glowed. And then Cole Piper does a cute little like turn of the shoulder and flames out. Yes. We then get also. In... Sorry, I just wanted to point out the fact that Cole morphed into Piper and was still wearing the watch. Piper would have taken that off. It's nighttime. It's yeah. bedtime. You don't wear a watch to bed. Well, I do, but it's my Fitbit, so I personally would advise against that. But whatever. It tracks my sleep. I there are phone apps for that. Nah, no. Nah. Okay, fine, whatever. Because I it, just like it tracks it, my heart also, rate while I'm sleeping. She hasn't ha- Fitbit hasn't been invented yet in the show. This is true. She should definitely not be wearing a watch to bed. This is true. Because all it's going to do is cut off circulation. That's it. Yeah. Make make dents in arm. Yes. Yes. It does in fact do that. Mm-hmm. Anyway. anyway, we get an exterior day shot of the manor. We look up at the house from the lawn. There's a plant with pink flowers on the left side. It's not a shot we've had before, and I kind of enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Inside Phoebe's bedroom, Phoebe wakes up with confusion. She apparently is a person who never moves in her sleep because all of the face cream is still perfectly set. Yep. On her face. Yep. Sleeps like a rock. Mm. Does not move. Yeah. She looks at the clock, sees that it's 11.07 a.m. In digital, thank you very much. Yes. And then quickly gets out of bed. She walks out into the hall where Paige is still sound asleep in the chair. She shakes Paige, saying that she was supposed to wake her, and then rushes into the bathroom. Paige comes to consciousness very slowly as Piper comes out of her room, kind of like putting her arms in front of her like like she's having trouble knowing where the walls are. Yeah. And then asks what time it is. We hear Phoebe scream and then come out of the bathroom and she has little red pimples all over her face. Mm Mm-hmm. And a few that look like whiteheads. Uh Uh-huh. And they're even in places that the cream wasn't, just saying. Yeah. Uh, Let this be a lesson to everyone. Don't try a brand new face cream the day before a big event. Just mm-hmm. just PSA. Yeah, also don't get like a chemical peel. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't, don't. go tanning. Don't go tanning. Don't, don't try do new makeup. Don't anything like the three days before you have a big event at which you know you want to like look nice. Yeah. Don't don't try a new foundation. No don't new try. haircuts. Yeah. Don't you do can it. maybe get like a slight trim, but don't get like a new haircut. Yeah, just just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Is is no good. Nope, no good. Phoebe asks Paige what she has to say for herself. Paige is like, "I fixed your wedding dress," which I'm a little confused by because she fell asleep and it wasn't finished. So how is it finished when she wakes maybe up? Maybe she was already most of the way there. Just saying. Phoebe storms into her room and says, "It's all Paige's fault that you put some mojo into my face cream." Paige. Says that she didn't and that it had all natural ingredients. Which doesn't necessarily mean that your face won't react to it. Yes, because arsenic is all natural, just saying. Yeah, so is cyanide. Yep. And, and, and also, you know, people have allergies. 
Mm -hmm. that they don't always know about. Yep. That's how I found out about the coconut allergy was yep. also a, uh, not just an ingestible, but a, a top, like a, a touch, yeah. a touch allergy as well, because I had a lotion that had coconut oil in it that hadn't been an issue before. And then all of a sudden now it gives me a rash. Duh. Thanks body. I hate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Phoebe starts to cry and tells Paige that if she has something to say, she should just say it. Piper tries to get them to calm down and take a breath. And Phoebe says that she knows how Paige really feels about Cole. Paige says, in an eerie sort of copy of Phoebe, that she has been nothing but supportive of that demon. Phoebe says he's an ex-demon. And, and Paige asks if that's, being, if that's like being an ex-convict. Which, you know, I mean, kind of. <laughs> it, was, it was a good quip. It was. Uh, Piper, Piper tries to get them to calm down again, but Paige is like, the wedding has been filled with bad omens from the start. Phoebe says that they're all connected to Paige. So Piper, like, whistles or yells or something and yep. breaks up the fight, tells Paige to back off, and tells Phoebe they can use a lot of makeup. Paige quips that there's not enough spackle in the world to fill those craters. As, I thought was as very funny. As Phoebe is trying to, like, pop one on her nose. Yeah. She tells Piper to back up. Phoebe asks what she's doing, and Paige says that she's trying to prove that she's not trying to sabotage the wedding. And then she says the spell that she used to clear up Billy's face and Carolyn's face. Of course, let the object of objection become but a dream as I cause the scene to be unseen. Phoebe seems a little freaked out that Paige is using magic on her, but we see the spots disappear, and Piper's like, it's working. And right when we see the spots disappear, you can kind of see that there are shadows on them. Like, all they did was heavily apply a face wipe mm -hmm. to Phoebe. Well, to Alyssa. Um, and then we cut to Piper's face where she's, like, impressed. And then when we cut back to Phoebe, it's like nothing was ever there. Yeah. And Phoebe is very excited that it's working. And then she turns invisible. She asks if her zits are gone. And Piper says she can honestly say that Phoebe's face is completely clear. And Phoebe cheers, and we can tell that she is cheering and clapping, because we hear the clapping and see the pajama arms moving. It was great. And we go to commercial break. Oh, God. I really want to know how that shot is achievable. Um, because it's not green screen, because you would see through the pajama set, right? It's a person wearing a green outfit. Yeah, but then what's projected on the back because the whole point of the green screen is that you become invisible against the background not against whatever you're inside right no because, not necessarily well i mean no because think of it this way the the point of the green is that it can be removed and replaced with something else so you can't see what's behind the person wearing the green except if it's previously being filmed like so they wouldn't be able to see the back of the, the pajama top or, like, the inside of the sleeves through the arm. So, like... Well, there's I'm... a bit of CG that's been added in. Okay. I mean, it's a combo green screen tech and CG okay. additions. I can I can jive with that. Yeah. I just, I just really want to know the technique for this because it looks really cool. Yeah. And then we have a lot of floaty objects later in the episode. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, watch The Invisible Man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a technology that's happened. Hollow Man. I'm sure that one, too. Probably not my favorite Kevin Bacon movie, but it's a good Kevin Bacon movie. I will take your word for it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we come back with an exterior shot of the manor that shows the lamppost on the street and two cars in the driveway. We have Piper's car and Paige's car. No swan hitch. No swan hitch. I was kind of sad mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Piper, Paige, and an invisible and naked Phoebe are in the attic. Yep. Paige has added a red hoodie to her outfit, and yeah. Piper is looking through the Book of Shadows. Yeah. Can I can I just say the fact that she's naked, all of a sudden, it was uh, very much a la convenience. Mm -hmm. Because there was no reason for her to take off her clothes. No. Other than a la convenience for the... Comedy of it all? Comedy of it all, and the... We don't want to show her being there... Yeah. So we can hide the fact that she exists invisibly. Yes. For a point later in the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just funny that Phoebe's comfortable with just being completely naked. Yeah. Around her sisters. Which, like, she knows she's invisible, but that's that's not something your brain's going to be like, yeah, totally fine now. Yeah. 
Anyway, Paige has added a red hoodie to her outfit because apparently she got cold. Yeah. I, like, she wasn't wearing it a second ago and now she is. Like, I don't... Mm. Sometimes additions to wardrobe I do not understand. Yeah. And she's also holding Phoebe's wedding dress while Phoebe is holding pieces of paper that she flings up and they rain down about the room for emphasis. Yep. Piper's looking through the Book of Shadows. And Phoebe is pissed because she's invisible. Paige, again, apologizes. Phoebe then walks across the room because we know she is still holding one piece of paper. So we see this paper float and Paige tries to follow her. Phoebe gets upset that Paige is following her and, like, scrunches up the piece of paper and chucks it. Yeah. So now we have no idea where she is anymore. Yeah. Piper tries to keep Phoebe calm and Paige holds up Phoebe's wedding dress. She says that Phoebe can't walk around naked, but she thinks that the dress should fit now. So here, try it on. Yeah. Phoebe snatches the dress from Paige, but wonders what difference it will make as no one can see her, and her wedding is supposed to be in less than an hour. Yep. How close is this church? Just putting that out there. She also says that everyone she's ever known is going to be there, because you invite everybody. Like, you'd, you'd think with your world being, you know, filled with supernatural shit that you wouldn't invite everyone you've ever known. And I doubt she's invited Aviva or any of the or Max. other people that we know. Just saying. Just putting that out there. Mm-hmm. Some books then go flying off a table. Piper says that the vanishing spell must have backfired and she's looking for a reversal in the book. And then Victor, Victor opens, opens the, the door. door. He is wearing a lovely black suit with a bow tie. He asks what's happening, why they aren't dressed. And then he asks, he asks where Phoebe is. And Piper says, oh, she's still putting, putting on, on her, her face. face. It was great. Victor says that he's been stalling the photographer, but he's already done portraits in every room of the house. Of who? Cole? Yeah, maybe? Dad? Yeah, like, I don't know. Not Phoebe or Paige or Piper. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Phoebe tells him to send them to the church. And then Victor's like, wait, what? Yeah, like Phoebe? Where's Phoebe? Uh, he can't see her, of course. And so Piper's like, I've been working on my Phoebe impression. And then covers her mouth. As Phoebe tells him to go downstairs and wait. And then she, like, pulls it up. And Victor's, like, looking skeptical. But she's like, I'm doing this for the toast later. Yeah. It was kind of funny. Yeah. Like, it was it was kind of a funny moment. Victor leaves. Phoebe says that they should just call Cole and tell him the wedding is off. Paige wonders why there was a backfire to the vanishing spell. Piper's like, yeah, personal game, probably. But Paige is like, there wasn't any backfire when I used it to help others before. So why... Is this happening happening for Phoebe? Phoebe. Piper wonders if Paige is saying that there's outside magic at play, and Paige is like, uh, yeah, the same magic that dug up the Lazarus demon, gave Phoebe acne, and supersized her wedding dress. Mm -hmm. Phoebe then is like, uh, she's rambling, should I yell at her again? Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Paige is connecting the dots, and Phoebe is the other member of BuzzFeed Unsolved saying, there are no dots to connect. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. You, you haven't connected shit. I've connected them. Yep. Piper is like, no, no, she might be onto something. And Paige is like, we're not fighting each other. We're fighting evil. And we kick evil's ass every day. Sometimes <laughs> twice a day, says Piper. Yeah. And Paige is like, we're not going to give up without a fight. Evil isn't going to win. So with Piper and Phoebe both on board, Phoebe tells them to get the book. Paige grabs the dress and they head out. Yep. With Phoebe being the one to open the attic door. So we see it open invisibly, which I always love. I don't mm-hmm. know why. We then get an exterior shot of the church with the white limo parked out front that has, like, little, like, pom-pom mm-hmm. all over it. Like, pink and blue. Or was it pink and blue? I think so. Okay. Pink, pink, blue, and green. I don't know. It was it was some pastel colors. I thought it was pink and white. So there you go. Um, anyway, inside there are lots of people in pews, but there are still, like, people walking around and, like, milling about. And being ushered in. Mm-hmm. And we see a photographer taking pictures of the guests. Now, he is uncredited on IMDb, but, you know, let, let me tell you about it. Alistair Dave Herz, he has 60 necking credits so far, starting back in 2001. And this episode of Charmed was his second acting credit. The four out of his first five roles are uncredited. <laughs> but they're there. So there you go. Yeah. The church is... Again, filled with those tons of flowers. Tons of flowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leo comes in and goes up to Cole, who has just finished ushering a woman to her seat. Both are wearing lovely black suits with bow ties, just like Victor was. Cole says that the wedding was supposed to start 15 minutes ago, 
and asks where the girls are. Leo says that Phoebe needs to talk to him in the dressing room. Cole's like, but that's bad luck for me to see the bride before the wedding. And, and Leo's, Leo's like, like, that won't be a problem. Not going to be a problem. No. Cole looks confused, but follows Leo. Cut to inside the dressing room with Piper, Paige, and Invisible Phoebe. Piper and Paige are now in their bridesmaids dresses, which are blue, and they have spaghetti straps, and there's like a large sequin flower just under the bust. With a little bit of gathered fabric. Yep. Piper's hair is pulled partially back with a pretty clip and a flower. And we can also see the tattoo that she has on her back right shoulder, which I think is the first time we've seen that one. Mm -hmm. Um, Paige's hair is pulled back on just one side with a lovely little pretty clip. And Paige hands Piper a piece of paper saying that it's the spell that reversed her enhanced breasts, which is guiding spirits, hear our plea, annul this magic, let it be. And And Piper... Burns the paper with with the candle that is lit. And lays it in a little dish. Yeah. And nothing happens. It's the last reverse spell they apparently have. Phoebe, annoyed that it didn't work, blows out the candle as someone knocks on the door. Piper opens it to Cole and then takes Paige so that Cole and Phoebe can be alone. But Cole is confused as to where Phoebe is. And he turns around and hears her voice and then turns to where it's coming from this chair where she's waving her bouquet. Mm-hmm. Or actually probably one of Piper or Paige's bouquets. I don't know. It was it's a bouquet, kinda small. It was a bouquet with white flowers. It was a little it was a small bouquet though. Like generally no, that doesn't the, mean the bridal bouquet is gonna be a bit bigger. Not necessarily, um, but yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I saw that bouquet with Piper later, so Yeah. Um, anyway, she says whatever demon's trying to stop the wedding has succeeded and she starts to cry. We see a tissue in midair and then a mirror in midair. Yeah. And Cole is just standing there looking awkward. Phoebe's like, I wanted the perfect wedding for you. You've given me so So much. much. And so we see him hold his arms out like he's hugging her. And there's this cool visual effect that's total CG where the flower on his lapel is squished a little bit like she's putting her face in it. And when you first notice it, it's it like you don't notice it get squished, but you notice it unsquish. Yeah, because it's you. That's how I knew it was CG is the yeah. unsquish. Yeah, it was very subtle when it got squished. Yeah, but the unsquish, I was like, oh, that's total CG. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's especially funny because like, at what point does it go through his brain that she's just fucking naked? Yeah, like in his arms while he's wearing a full suit. Yep. Yeah, but yep. no, he doesn't say anything about it. He's like, "We'll find another way. I'll go make the announcement, but we'll find another way for another day or whatever." Yeah. Um. And so, at this point, Piper and Paige walk back in. Cole, Cole immediately tells them the wedding's off, but they have other plans. In the thirty seconds they were outside, they made another plan. Yep, they Piper, figured some shit out. Yeah. Piper tells him to get everyone in their positions and start the processional. So she takes Cole to the door. He asks about Phoebe being invisible, and Piper's like. Well, hopefully that won't be for long, and tells him to look for her walking down the aisle. He So she shoves him out and pipe and closes the door. Phoebe is confused because they were out of spells, but Paige says that reversing the spell hasn't worked, but that they can just shift the invisibility to her instead. Meaning Paige. Yeah. Phoebe isn't so sure about it, but Paige says that every Cinderella needs a fairy godmother... And that she needs to do this so that Phoebe knows for sure that she's not trying to stop the wedding. Uh, Just outside the doors of the church, Leo walks over to Daryl and Victor. Daryl is also in a matching suit. Mm -hmm. Daryl mentions that some people have left. Victor wonders what's going on. Cole comes up and says he wishes he knew, but tells him to get to their places. Leo and Daryl walk inside, and then we hear the seer's voice asking if she gets a seat. Cole and Victor turn around and we see the seer wearing a long sleeve blue outfit with like a flower pattern on it and a dark blue headscarf. And it kind of reminded me very much of like an Indian, like India yeah, yeah, outfit. Yeah. Not like a sari, but like one of the other ones. Kaftan type deal? Yeah, kind of. But it's like the long sleeve yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyway, Victor's like, oh, yeah, I'll seat you. But Cole's like, no, I'll do it. You need to go wait for Phoebe. So Victor goes inside, and the seer holds onto Cole's arm as they walk inside. Cole says that they're going to recognize her. She asks if the potion worked, and if they used the spell he thought they would. He says it did, and they did, and now Phoebe's invisible. So she asks why the wedding is still happening, and he's like, I think they might have found a spell to reverse it. The seer asks if Phoebe found an obedience spell to make him do what she wants, and he tells her not to forget who she's talking to, and sits her down. 
Piper then comes out of the dressing room and goes to her place at the front of the church so she does not notice the seer sitting next to Cole. Yeah. Cole asks the seer where the Lazarus demon is. She says he's just waiting for his command, and he tells her to order the demon to attack because the girls will stop the ceremony in order to save innocent lives. The so the seer, seer, after having just sat down, leaves. gets right back up. Yep, gets right back up and leaves. Cole goes to his place, and the minister walks into frame. So let me tell you about him real quick. David Doty is a bit of that guy with 87 acting credits between 1998 and 2011, even though he has no picture on IMDb. He has been in a ton of single episodes of TV shows. His second longest gig was five episodes of Weeds, where he played Principal Dodge, but his longest running gig was 24 episodes on the single season of a 1990 show called What a Dummy. Now, it was a horrible show that was luckily canceled after that one season. It's about a man named Ed, played by David Doty, whose uncle died and left him all of his ventriloquist stuff, including the dummy named Buzz. And Buzz had been locked in a trunk for 50 years and was somehow sentient. That's an episode of Buffy. That's an episode of Tales from the Crypt. That too. But this That's is a, a song about a creepy comedy. <laughs> it's also a Goosebumps book. Yeah. Ventriloquist dummy. Mm-hmm. I am going to put a YouTube clip on the website that will show you just a glimpse of the insanity of this show. Though the people in our Discord have already seen it, which is just another reason to email us that secret passphrase. We're the power of two plus blue. And get yourself into the Discord. Just Mm -hmm. saying. The minister nods up to the quartet. They begin playing the wedding march, where previously they had been playing my least Least favorite favorite song. Yes. Pachelbel's Canon in D. Yes. Victor and Phoebe walk down the aisle in her beautiful, beautiful dress. Mm -hmm. Daryl asks Leo where Paige is, and Leo's like, I don't know, but we see, quite hilariously, Uh a padded chair slide in. Into the middle of the quietly. eye. Yeah, quietly slide into view. Just barrel down the aisle. Yep, straight in the back of the church. Yeah. And we hear Paige say she's going to cry. And just so everyone can understand this visual, we have an invisible Paige naked. sitting naked on, on a, a fabric, fabric chair, chair in a church during a wedding. Just that that visual. Just yeah. Naked page. Uh huh. Because she's not in her dress. Naked page. Fabric chair. Just, just uh-huh. saying. In room full of, of people. people. Yeah. The minister thanks everyone for coming. We quote unquote see Paige grab a tissue. And then we see the Lazarus demon smoke in. Paige, Paige of course, is the first him. one that sees him because yeah. he's at the back of the church. And as the minister asks if anyone has objections to the wedding, Paige picks up a candlestick. And hits the Lazarus demon on the head. He kind of does like an, ooh. Yeah. And then like tumbles out the door. Yeah. Nobody seems to notice the oof sound. But as she pushes him out the door and the doors slam shut, everyone turns to look because they heard the noise of the doors clattering. Yeah. The minister continues asking for anyone's objections. And the demon uses his telekinetic power to send invisible page through the door into the like yeah. dressing room. Yeah. Through, through a different door. Which leads to the, the dressing room. Yeah. Everyone, again, hears that noise. Uh-huh. And, and so Piper's like, I'll check it out. And continue. Yeah. You just just keep keep going. Yeah, so she walks up the aisle. And then runs. And out of the church. Yeah, she runs. She gets about halfway up the aisle and then just takes off at a run. And the minister... That's a signature move of hers, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. The minister says that since no one has shown just cause, and he starts to ask a question, and then outside of the church... We hear Piper yelling, and then another crash, which everyone turns again to look, and then Leo excuses himself and books it out of the church. Yeah. Phoebe begs for the minister to continue, which he does by asking who's giving Phoebe away. Victor stands up and says, her sisters and I are, and then sits back down. And And then then we hear Piper yelling, son of a bitch, from outside. Paige screams, and then Leo calls out for Piper, and there's another crash. And at this point, Phoebe drops her bouquet, and she runs outside. And then Cole follows her. And we cut to the the dressing room, where Piper is lying on the floor with a bit of a cut on her head. 
as Phoebe and Cole race in. And the Lazarus demon uses his telekinetic power on Leo, makes him fly across the room into Phoebe, knocking her over. And then Coolio picks up a chair and goes to smash Phoebe with it, but Cole cries out for him to stop, which, of course, Coolio does. Yeah. No one seems to question that in that second, but then Piper blows him up. Phoebe asks where Paige is, but since she's invisible, nobody can see her. Phoebe asks Leo where she is, because he should be able to sense her, but he says that he can't get a read on her, which means her heart isn't beating. Uh, which is in direct contrast to what Cole is seeing, which is a tiny pool of blood spreading on the floor next to, like, a tall, tall lamp candelabra thingy. Yeah. Um, he... Hesitates, hesitates for a bit, but then just a second. walks over to it and says, over here. Right. And so Leo runs over, starts to heal her. We get his light reflecting off of a bit of her skin somehow. Yeah. Or like a wound it, or something. Like no, We can it was see like, the blood coming out of her, but we can't see anything else. We don't see a wound, but there's like a weird reflection off of some bit of her body. Yeah. It was like the light kind of got stopped before hitting the floor. Yeah. It was, it was a nice effect. Just then... Daryl and the minister come rushing in. The minister asks what's going on. Phoebe yanks off her veil, says the wedding is off, and tells him to tell everyone to leave, and then pushes Daryl and the minister out of the door. And she leans against the door as Leo is still trying to heal an invisible page, and we go to commercial break. We Oh, I know where we've seen Piper use that weird walk and then run shuffle move. It was the baby shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where she, like, walks to get out of the ring of ladies and then madly shuffles. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah, it's that move. Yeah, it's uh, quite we, we come back sometime later. We're inside the church. All the guests have left. It's kind of dark. Yep. The girls, Cole and Leo, are there. Piper has added a long tan jacket. A long and a, tan suede jacket. Yep. And a light blue scarf to her outfit. Phoebe has donned a long patchwork jacket in shades of tan and orange knitting with dark green fur sleeves and collar. Yep. Mm-hmm. Paige is... Such a weird jacket. Yeah. Paige is sitting in one of the pews covered by a blanket, nothing else, and is visible again. Yep. Clip is gone from her hair. Again, she's still naked. Yeah, you'd think she'd have put her dress back on, but apparently mm -hmm. not. Piper is on the phone to the caterer, telling them to send the food and the bill to the house. Piper hangs up, Phoebe thanks her for dealing with it, and then Piper asks Paige how she's doing. She says she's a little bit shaky, and Leo's like, yeah, well, we nearly lost you, but it's lucky that the demon hesitated when Cole yelled. Phoebe questions why he hesitated, and Cole's like, oh, he must have been surprised that someone yelled at him. Uh, evidence would show... He'd been yelled at a lot already. Yep. Leo thinks that they should be thankful that they're alive. Paige is thankful to be visible, but isn't sure how that happened. Skull says that the magic they were under was obviously supposed to stop the wedding, so it wore off once the wedding was canceled. Phoebe says that that means that evil won, but she's not stopping until she finds out who sent the Lazarus demon after them. Piper says that they need to get the crispy critter. Back to a cemetery. I don't know why, but I just loved that that image. Yeah. Because it made me think of, like, a rat on a barbecue. <laughs> I was thinking more like, um, like a shrimp kebab. Mm. Like a deep fried shrimp kebab. Mm. I was thinking, there was, like, an image from a vampire Because critter, movie. for me, always implies something that, like, skitters across. That's why I think of Something rats. with, like... Well, critter, legs. for me, is, is critical role reference. So, okay, you know. there you go. Yeah. Anyway, Cole says that he knows a place that he can take it. Piper warns that if her freeze wears off, he'll be, quote, as defenseless as a cat toy, unquote. <laughs> Not as defenseless as a kitten, but as defenseless as a cat toy. Yep. Which is even more defenseless than a kitten, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe says she'll go with him to make sure it gets in the ground for good. And Paige says they should all go. So Cole agrees with a barely visible smile. We time jump to a cemetery where Cole is standing in front of a grave with a shovel. The girls and Leo catch up to him. Leo is carrying a flashlight and another shovel. And Paige, who has put back on her bridesmaid's dress, has added a long, dark brown fuzzy jacket to her outfit, is carrying a large box. A large cardboard box. Yes. Uh, Cole says that he found a headstone from the early 1900s, so likely no one will be digging it up anytime soon. Leo tells Piper to freeze anyone she sees coming, and Cole starts to dig. 
Piper reminds Phoebe that it took her and Leo three times to get married, so it'll happen for her. Uh, and they just need to figure out what kind of evil stopped her wedding and why. Paige <laughs> realizes they can just ask, ask the, the demon. demon. So Cole says that a Lazarus demon is a time bomb waiting to explode. But Phoebe's like, no, I want to know who ruined the happiest day of my life. So Paige tips all the ash out of the box onto the grass. Cole begs Phoebe not to do it, and Phoebe is surprised that he doesn't want to know. And, and then, then the Coolio Lazarus reappears. Yep. He resurrects. And Piper, Piper, I love Piper's line. I think it's something like, you know, uh, flinch and I'll turn you into a briquette. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Uh, was, she tells him she'll blow him up if he tries anything. So Phoebe asks who resurrected him. There's a bit of a pause. And then Coolio turns around and points at Cole and says, ask, ask him. Ask him. Uh, he says that he swore gesturing at Cole. He swore he'd never see a cemetery again and that he's been set up. And so Piper asks Cole what the demon is talking about. Cole tries to say he has no, no idea. idea. The demon calls him a liar and says he was ordered to attack the church and asks if that's how he rewards his loyal servants. Cole tells Phoebe that she's freaking out and demands to know what's going on. Cole says that they've already figured it out and then throws a fireball at the Lazarus demon who turns back into ash and Phoebe starts freaking out that it can't be true, it can't be true when she looks away. And then Cole morphs into the seer in the red robes and Paige is like, oh, no. it's not true. It's Look, the seer. Yeah. It's the seer. And so Piper goes to blow her up but Phoebe, for some reason, stops her. Phoebe asks where Cole is. The quote-unquote seer says that he is unconscious in the mausoleum and Paige asks why she would save them one day, but try to kill them the next. The seer says she's trying to keep the balance of power between good and evil. Piper's like, don't be cryptic. I, I hate, hate cryptic. cryptic. And the seer's like, I had a vision. She tells Phoebe that if she married Cole on this day, that his love would have helped her evolve into a much stronger witch. Too strong. And she needed to be stopped. And then she flames out. Now, keep in mind, they have met the seer before. Uh -huh. They have never seen her flame in or out of anywhere. Or and throw also, a fireball. Yeah. Yep. But they've or seen... Or shapeshift, frankly. But they've seen the they've source seen all do all of, of this. Yes. Just saying. Uh-huh. Just saying. Yeah. Piper calls her a bitch. So that's the second bitch yeah. said in this episode. Leo tells Phoebe to go to Cole while he buries the Lazarus demon. The girls go running off. We cut over to the mausoleum where the seer flames in and changes back into Cole. He takes off his bow tie and lies down on the ground just before the girls run in. Now, I thought it was very funny. He takes off the bow tie and puts it in his pocket. Yeah, bit weird. Yeah, like he doesn't even like put it on the ground next to him. It just, he puts it in his pocket. Mm -hmm. It's a little or odd. Or just like leave it in the thing and it just happened to like come undone. Uh, but, anyway. No, he takes it completely off. He he arranges himself on the floor and manages to close his eyes just as the girls come down the stairs. They call out to him and they all run over. And Cole's like, it was the seer. She's in the cemetery. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we had a little chat. Yeah. Paige says that she's surprised the seer didn't kill Cole. He groans and says, that's not her style. She only kills if she has to. Phoebe says they should get him home as Leo walks in and asks if he's okay, because apparently Leo's a fast digger. Like, I don't know. What? Okay. Now, my other question in all of that... What, honestly, it's a little bit of ash. It's not that much. It'd fit in a tiny hole. Right, but, but I thought it was very funny, though, is they brought it in this huge flipping box... <laughs> And then she tips Dumps it out. it onto the ground. Like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So what did he do? Just dig a small hole and then just scrape it in? I wonder, I wonder if he dug the hole and then, like, scooped it and the, the grass it was on off of the ground and then dumped that in the hole and then covered it up. Yeah. Because that's the only way that's going to happen. Or maybe, like, just, you know. it, it doesn't need to be all of him that's buried. It just needs to be part of it and it needs to be on the cemetery. Like, yeah. mm, I don't know. know. Don't know. As long as part of him is, like, interred, the rest of him can't rise. Yeah, I don't know. It's very weird. Very, very weird. Anyway. And anyway, as the rain comes, it's going to wash him further into the ground anyway. Yes. We cut to them walking through the mausoleum. Paige is confused as to why the seer wouldn't kill Cole if she really wanted to stop the wedding. And Cole's like, well, you have to ask her. And then they walk past a tiny little chapel at the mausoleum. We see the mausoleum 
that the sign of the door is labeled the Chapel of the Gardens. Yeah. Um, so weird. Yeah. Leo is the one who points it out, and Paige is like, what's this doing here? Yeah, Piper's chapel like, in a mausoleum? Yeah. Leo says, that's a first. Piper thinks it's cute, and Cole's like, it's perfect. Phoebe asks what it's perfect for, and Cole says that it's perfect for a wedding. Piper agrees. Yeah. And then... Phoebe questions this, but Paige is like, well, you know, you've got the rings. And Leo's like, we're all here, which is funny. Because there's no Victor or Daryl. There's no Victor. That's the, I was like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. You're going to, okay. Yeah. So all Phoebe right. decides to do it and they all walk inside. And we then we get a small montage with no words, just music. We see the dark priest, of course, lighting black candles. Cole taking a rose from a nearby arrangement and handing it to Phoebe. She rips off most of the stem, turns it into a boutonniere for Cole, and pricks her thumb on a thorn. Which shouldn't have been there if it was an actual arrangement from a, a florist. But it's a dark florist! Apparently It's so. a dark florist! We get an insert shot of a bleeding thumb before we see Cole put said bleeding finger into his mouth. Mm-hmm. Kiss it, make it better. Yeah. Uh, we see them going through the ceremony, the dark priest showing them the rings, with Paige, Piper, and Leo looking on. Uh, Cole places the wedding ring on Phoebe's hand. In, in front of the engagement ring, like all TV shows do. She'll switch it later. Uh, the dark <laughs> priest then places his hands on their joined hands and says, not two but one till life be gone. Which I think is actually kind of a nice sentiment. It is. Um, it is it's certainly nice. fucking better than you are now a man and wife. Uh, yes. Husband and wife is better. Man and wife? Mm. Semantics, guys. It's important. Um, yeah. He then tells Cole that he may kiss the bride. So Cole and Phoebe kiss. She says, we did it. He replies, yes, we did. And they kiss again. And we get and a cute moment. I love this moment. In in the background, because we, we shift to after the wedding is over. Like the, the back of the chapel by the yeah. door. Where in the background... At the front of the chapel, we see Cole going to shake Piper's hand. And she, like, bats it away. And my brain interpreted this as a high five. Yeah, it was just like, oh, stop it. That kind of, like, thing yeah. for me. And then we see the seer appear at the back of the chapel. She says, it is done, with a bit of an echo in her and voice. no one notices her. No one notices her. And then we go to end credits. Yep. It was definitely an interesting ending. Mm -hmm. But I just love that little scene in, in the back, you know, blurry in the background mm -hmm. of him going to shake Piper's hand and her being like, ah, stop it. Nah, <laughs> shake nah. him, push that hand away. It was kind of funny. Yeah. So, with end credits, we are on two ratings. Mm -hmm. I am giving this episode a 7.75 out of 10. You never do 7.5s. I know. 7.75 out of 10 Wicked Weddings. And I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 Charco Coolios. Mm, that's a very good one. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. Yeah, I literally just thought of it. I love it. I, once again, forgot to think of something before we got to this point. <laughs> Fortunately this enough, Coolio's in there. She does this every Not week. Not every week. But most weeks, yes. Most weeks, yes. And you're the one that wanted to do the ratings that way. So, you know. Anyway. I'm sorry. I just forget. <laughs> I only watched the episode like three hours ago, remember? I know. I do much more prep than you do. It's yes. okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> anyway, At so. At least this time it was easy. Yes. So with ratings done, we're on to outfits. And I mean, come on, the wedding outfits have to win, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't mind Paige's first outfit. The, the gold shirt? I didn't mind the gold shirt either, but the the red oh roughly, yeah yeah with yeah the red black roughly. and the... that was cute. No, it I liked nice her. I liked her one sleeve. Thing. Yeah, I did kind of like the gold sleeve outfit too, like that, but in like a midnight blue, like mm. a sheer midnight blue. Yeah, that'd be mine. That'd be mine. Be very nice. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, with outfits done, we are now on to social media. As always, you can email us questions comments, quimments, or queries, yes, uh, to charmedchats at gmail.com, and uh, you can find the links to whatever we mentioned in today's episode at charmedchats.com, which is where you can also find the links to our Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, Redbubble, and Patreon pages. And 
Again, if you want to join the Discord, all you have to do is email us the phrase, we're the power of two plus blue, and we will send you an invite link. Yes. Because we want more people in the Discord. It's a fun, fun place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a bunch of channels for talking about other shows. Yep. Um, Sharing YouTube links. Building a little community. And the best part about the Discord is that's where all the sneaky peek stuff comes up. If, If I am doing my notes and something really weird comes up. Like, what a dummy. Yeah, like, what a dummy. It will show up in the Discord, possibly, first. Because it's like, here, this is now in my brain. I want it in your brain right now. Yes. You know, little things. Or, like, if I get a a, a song about The Good Place stuck in my head. Because exactly. it's really fucking catchy. Yeah. And I want to get it stuck in everyone else's head. Exactly. And it's just, it's a fun little place of, you know, people chatting about stuff and things. Yes. And a little stuff community. and things, Lori. Okay. Walking Dead. Okay. I stopped watching after, like, season three. But... I I think maybe I watched part of the first season. Yeah. No. Stuff and Things is a... Okay. It's, for me, a reference to Walking Dead anyway. All right. Anyway, so, until next time, sleep tight. Don't let the warlocks bite. Or but... give you any face cream. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Ciao!